Allegations of Russian war crimes have been well documented throughout Vladimir Putin's war on Ukraine. But among the most organized and coordinated instances of war crimes carried out by Russian authorities is the forced taking and transferring of Ukrainian children to Russia. This video from the Associated Press shows what, shows what that looks like. Ukrainian children boarding buses in Russian-occupied territory in Ukraine before heading to Moscow, where they are turned over to adults. A State Department-backed report by Yale estimates Russia's federal government has systematically relocated at least 6,000 children from Ukraine to a network of re-education and adoption facilities in Russian-occupied Crimea and mainland Russia. The report makes clear that number is likely a significant undercount. Well, today, the International Criminal Court issued arrest warrants for Russian President Vladimir Putin and the woman he appointed to lead the forced transfer of children, Maria Lavova Belova. The president of the International Criminal Court had this to say about the warrants. It is forbidden by international law for occupied powers to transfer civilians from the territory they live in to other territories. Children enjoy special protection under the Geneva Convention. Russia does not recognize the International Criminal Court, so only time will tell if these arrests will ever materialize. But our next guest says one thing is certain. Vladimir Putin will forever be tagged as, quote, an indicted fugitive of international criminal justice. Joining us now, David Sheffer, senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. He served as the first U.S. ambassador at large for war crimes issues during the Clinton administration. Uh, thank you very much for, for being here, uh, David. Let's take a listen to what President Biden had to say today about these warrants. Sir, could you, could you give us your reaction to the International Criminal Court issuing an arrest warrant for Vladimir Putin? Well, I think it's justified, but the question is, it's not recognized internationally by us either. But I think it makes a very strong point. So, Ambassador Sheffer, neither Russia nor the United States recognized the court's jurisdiction. Given that, what are the practical implications of these warrants, especially since Russia has already dismissed them as, quote, legally void? The practical implications are there regardless of the view of the United States or of Russia at this point. Uh, this is an indicted individual now uh, before the International Criminal Court uh, that will stand uh, for, for many years to come. Uh, and so, as, as you said, he's an indicted fugitive now from international criminal justice, and he'll take that label with him uh, to his grave. But I also think that by being indicted now by the International Criminal Court, he enters a new zone of risk for him for his own power. First of all, he's an international pariah. It'll be very difficult for him to travel anywhere outside mm -hmm. of, of Russia, other than to perhaps Iran and China, North Korea and Belarus. Um, and he also will begin to lose his legitimacy domestically. We've seen this in the past, over the last 30 years. History shows us that individuals who are at the top of their government, uh, whether it be in Africa or elsewhere, uh, in Europe, um, in Asia, they will ultimately lose favor domestically, and they will lose power. And once they lose power, in part because they are indicted fugitives, they will be at risk of a successor government actually transferring them to The Hague for trial. So that is what confronts uh, Mr. Putin and Ms. Belova at this point. Hmm. You know, Russia says it's not forcefully deporting children, but rather saving them from war zones. But the Associated Press notes, quote, whether or not they have parents, raising the children of war in another country or culture can be a marker of genocide and a, an attempt to erase the very identity of an enemy. Can you expand on that point, Ambassador? Yes. Uh, first step, it's a war crime. Um, and that's clear under the Fourth Geneva Convention. It's clear under the statute of, of the International Criminal Court that what Russia is doing is a war crime. It could evolve with further investigation and evidence that it becomes a crime against humanity. In other words, it's part of a widespread or systematic assault on the civilian population of Ukraine. 
But then it could evolve into an act of genocide, because one of the counts under the Genocide Convention, and Russia is a, a party to the Genocide Convention, is the, uh, the deportation of individuals to uh, another group, which in this case would be the Russians, transporting Ukrainian citizens, children or otherwise, into the hands of, uh, or frankly, onto the territory of Russia, and so insidiously for the children into the, to the arms of, of families and parents in Russia to be raised as Russians. That can trip the genocide wire. So you have three levels here. And this is, frankly, just the beginning for the International Criminal Court. Uh, one more question for you, Ambassador. When you think of the few allies P Putin has, like Chinese President Xi Jinping, who's supposedly going to Moscow to meet with Putin next week, do you think this historic decision to indict him will put that allyship at risk? Well, I don't know if it's going to be at risk, but it's going to make it much more difficult and, frankly, for there to be any initiative by China to support the Russian war effort in Ukraine will now be further uh, tarnished by the fact that it's to support the actions and plans and designs and strategies of an indicted fugitive who's, who's indicted for crimes of this character. Remember, uh, there... This is just the beginning. We can expect more indictments uh, or arrest warrants against Mr. Putin and his colleagues in the leadership of Russia for a whole range of war crimes and for crimes against humanity and possibly genocide out of the ICC. So for China to get immersed in that cannot possibly be to China's advantage.